Okay, so it's close to the end of the day. If you guys all want to stand up, take a second, just stretch out a little bit, shake around. Cool, we're nearly done, awesome. Okay, I'm Eleanor Harding. I, I build things. You can find me on Twitter at Swedenor if you want to say hello. Um, on the scope from code to design, I do this bit. Um, I'm a product developer, so I do a lot of different things, a bit of a Swiss army knife. Um, on a scale from zero to being really good at building bad PowerPoint diagrams, I'm definitely over there, as you can tell, just so you know. Okay, the structure of the talk today is gonna be in hours, because you guys know better than anyone how many hours go into organizing a hackathon. So it's all about what you're putting into this. Um, so starting at about 720 hours before your hackathon, it's about a month, why are you doing this? We're focusing on improving the quality of submissions, and this is the most important question that you need to ask yourself. Do you want people to be building cool stuff, or do you want people to be building things that they can actually take to market later? Do you want to be building things for your sponsors using their APIs? You've got to consider all of these things way before you start and keep asking yourself these questions and go back to that. About three weeks before the time, plan out the whole weekend in advance, your schedule that's been mentioned before. How are you going to structure the weekend? When are you going to present? Are you going to do expo style or are you going to do all of the presentations that take forever? Are you gonna do 60 second presentations? Are you gonna do three minute presentations? Are you gonna do 10 minute presentations? Bearing in mind that as you all know, sitting and watching presentations is exhausting work, especially if you haven't slept for 24 hours and you've been hacking the whole time. Okay, 336 hours before you go, you need to be building up the hype, use social media, get people really invested into your hackathon. If they're looking forward to it and they can't wait for it to happen, they're gonna be so excited to get there and the quality of submissions is gonna be so much higher because they want to be there and they want to be building something incredible. This is also a great time to send out getting started guides. Send out an email saying, if this is your first hack, check out these amazing resources that MLH has provided right here. If you're gonna be using APIs, get started early. Give examples of what people have built using those APIs. Give examples of previous hacks, link to things on dev posts. There are so many resources and all of this is going to build up the hype. Yeah, that's it, hype building. Okay, um, 168 hours, tell your hackers what to build. Give them ideas, give them suggestions. They're full of ideas, but they need direction. They don't know where they're gonna go yet, and there's so much potential that they can do. And then just before you start, use tools. Things like dev posts are so valuable with hackathons. People are gonna be creating these hacks, but then afterwards, you wanna go back to these hacks and see what people have done. So using a tool like dev posts, I mean, it goes without saying, to facilitate the whole thing is just a necessary step. Okay, when you get there on the day, We've spoken a lot about team formation. I really like the t-shirt idea. I thought that was absolutely fantastic. Another idea that I've seen works really well is if you have like a sign, like the HackCon one right there, that just says, find a team here. So it's really casual. As soon as people arrive, they just go and stand there and then find a team. Some of the best hacks that I've been to, I met my team on the day and we just went hacking from there and it's fantastic. You don't have to know the team before you show up and then you can create something magical. Okay, um, prizes are something to consider. Cash prizes and big prizes are not necessarily the good way to go. I think what's important about prizes is the recognition of your work. So instead of going for like a huge cash prize, it's much more valuable to the hacker to get awarded for the best technical implementation, the cleanest code, the best use of an API that's a legitimate award. It's also really important to not double up the awards if there's one really great hack, don't give them all of the prizes. You've got to split it up between everyone, otherwise you'll just get a lot of like bad feeling from the other hackers where they think, oh, the one guy just got all the prizes. Okay, just before your hackathon, how are you gonna be judging it? Really think about that before you start and communicate that to the hackers. Tell them again and again and again how it's going to be judged and then actually stick to it. If you're gonna do like 25% idea, 25% design, 25% code, 25% whatever innovation, let them know and then stick to that and then facilitate coming up with a good idea once the hackers start. The ideas need to be simple and they need to be executable and you need to tell your hackers that. They need to know that. And it's all about execution of these things. A lot of people write off ideas if they've heard them before, but a lot of the ideas are not about 
coming up with something new. If you've got an idea that's solving a global problem, somebody else has already thought of that because it's a global problem. So a lot of it is about the execution of it, and that's what a hackathon is about too, executing something cool, using a bunch of things, putting them together. Okay, once you get in workshops, use the resources and APIs, get people talking about that, get them into it. Um, once the hackathon starts, it's a very delicate thing of whether you should like go and bother your hackers or not. It could be a question of they just want to be left alone, or it could be a question of you should go and speak to them, hear what they're building, see if you can give them some input. So you've got to play it by ear and, and see what the best thing is. Okay, um, at this point into the hackathon, you should really be using DevPost. Get your hackers to upload early. Tell them to upload why they came up with the idea. Tell their story on DevPost. Get them to upload photos, because then you have that later. And as we've heard from all of these talks earlier, the stories are vitally important to telling your story late, later, telling it to sponsors, communicating what the hack was about, sharing it with the world. Okay, now something completely different, because I know you're all tired. Bubblegum for the mind, 30 seconds of absolute nonsense. If Rapunzel wanted to dye her hair blue, it would take one box of hair coloring for every 10 centimeters of hair, considering the thickness of her hair, and she has about 23.4 meters of hair, so that would take 234 boxes of hair coloring, and at three pounds 66 from Boots, that would cost her 856 pounds and 44 cents. But that hair continues to grow. It does, so she would have to do it, and, and you'd have to redo it every two weeks, or it would like fade, so maybe not the best idea. Do with that information what you will. Once you're into the hackathon, again, it's really important to get some sleep. It will improve the quality of the hacks. It's, it's those like couple of hours of sleep that like really get you to like solve all the problems that you were working on. Really, really important. And then practicing of the presentations. Braintree has a really good setup where they do the rehearsals. It's also good to get the hackers to think about how they're going to present. Um, it's really important to think what you're going to squeeze into those three minutes. I think it's vitally important that you need to do a demo but it's also really important to consider what you're going to say. It's 24 hours of work compressed down into three minutes, which is absolutely ridiculous. So it's difficult to like go up and wing it. You really have to like think about what it is and you need to communicate this to the hackers. Okay, really important, tell benefits, not features. Don't list like a list of technical features. Say like what the feature does, like why, why it's great, why it's fantastic. Tell a bloody story. Tell me about Dylan who likes pina coladas and long romantic walks to the fridge and why he'll like Tinder for pizza that you've just created at your hack. Tell a story that's memorable to the judges because they're going to think about that later. They're not going to remember the list of, of features that you told them. And actually do a demo. It's a hackathon. It's technical. I want to see code. It needs to be like tangibly there. It needs to do something and work. Even if like you just talk about the code, like it needs to be into there. A lot of the judges are non-technical and so they won't understand it, but it's very easy to communicate what you've done and what you've coded in English and then they'll understand it. Okay, right before you end, get them to upload everything onto DevPost, onto GitHub, put links into everything so you can have a look at it later. Um, 23 hours getting ready to rumble just before they present. They're gonna be really nervous, so you've gotta help them onto stage and then get ready to do the presentations and then showtime. Um, work the way through the presentations, they always take forever, but um, yeah, it's a good way to facilitate it. If you've got good AV, that always increases the quality of your hack immediately. I mean, if you've got a huge, beautiful stage, a hack looks much better than if you've got like a desk and a projector. And then afterwards, you can go and announce your winners, but really go into detail when you're doing it. It's all of these small prizes that really add value to the participants once they've created something incredible, really highlight the small details about the hack that they got right, and then they'll remember that and build on it next time. And then also, if people don't win, sometimes they get a little bit sad. And then you're done. You've created a hackathon. You've helped a whole bunch of people build something fantastic. You've done something really amazing. So if you guys could all lift up your right hand, and then turn it around, and then give yourself a pat on the back, because you guys are doing incredible things by organizing hackathons, and you're very clearly changing lives. So thanks. If you have any questions, now is the time. <laughs>